onto our main event. We are going to be looking at and reviewing the... Take that alcohol. Easy 8. This literally... Uh, this... I'm going to use the word literally because that's the only thing that's popping in my head right now. Uh, this literally came out from where I live like a few days ago. Like this last weekend. This came out. So... Or was at least in stores. They did release a version of this which came with three tanks. As you can see here, and that was like 100 bucks for three of them. But I just wanted the one because I have a bunch of Shermans. And I already have a Jumbo, so I don't need that. Which, a uh, quick tip if you want a Warlord Jumbo tank, but you don't want to, you know, special order one in and pay a little extra if you, you know, versus a, uh, you know, the thing. The thing thing of the thing 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 thing, you know, Rubicon or whatever. If you get the oddball special Sherman tank, you get a uh, a jumbo. It's technically a jumbo. Uh, there's some movie magic Hollywood BS that happens, but it's from Kelly's Heroes. But you get a jumbo that has a bunch of cool uh, stuff already molded into it, so you can make it your veteran. And it comes with crews that can fit basically a lot of vehicles for their drivers and their commanders and the and a crew riding on it. So. You can just get that, and it's to scale basically. You can either have it as a to have it as a to scale um, Sherman, or you can use it as a jumbo. The only thing you have to be aware, cautious about is that the the turret that they use on it. Again, the the model's based off the movie version of the thing, so I'm pretty sure the turret that they use on there is like some weird squashed Sherman one, or uh, like some weird Russian. T70 whatever you know Cold War era turret top but if you can 3d print this top the hull basically is a jumbo from the oddball one and it's it's worth its money so anyways enough rumbling on that let's zoom in here the blur there you go so we have our description here about the tank about the uh, why it's an easy eight. We have decals. This was also used in Korea too. So you can use this for the Korean War um, game version. Here we have the different tanks. I don't think the logs are included. But you have like your British version, there's Canadian version. And all your all that jazz. I mean, box is huge. But yeah, it's Canadian Army Easy Eight Medium Tank Lord Strathcona Horses. Yeah, so from Korea. So. So you have your your different versions. You have your like Korean War tank crew, and you have your normal crew. You basically have the dude. Uh, you basically have, uh, what's his name, from Fury, you have him as a commander in here. So, I'm gonna build him like that, so let's open this up. So, here we go. So we have our smoke markers, which... I have a bunch of this already that I don't use. I just raid these for the, uh... I should I should make more of them. Uh, raid that for the bases because in short supply and I need them for my Panzalier. Eh. Then we have the good stuff. I don't know if any of you have had this person make your warlord stuff. Let me know. But it comes with. The okay, so they they are starting to do that now. Cool. So all your new models. Are gonna start coming with order dice. That's really ingenious. This this when you make a system that requires this, and you Games Workshop, Games Workshop, can can you can you see this? Can 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 you? Sorry for your ears, people. Can you see this Games Workshop? Look at this. Oh, well, when you make a game that requires a thing to play, and you buy a unit just like like Legion does, and War Machine. 
give us the thing to play. So your your stuff is going to start coming with ordered dice now, and you can start collecting it. So you buy. So if you bought like the, um, because I don't know if they're going to, I don't think they're going to start do, doing it to older ones. But like say, you buy the starter box for uh, conflict, and you buy your 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 easy eight, and you buy your weapon crew, you're going to have all the dice you'll need to play. And your templates, because it gives you templates and stuff in the conflict one. A lot of people underestimate the value of the conflict starter boxes, but they give you your templates, your um, your uh, morale markers, your dice, your combat dice, a measuring stick. It's literally a starter box, except for you only get one force. And man, I am I am a huge fan of this. And of course, we have our transfer sheets. With uh, a bunch of different names on it and uh, unit markings and stuff. We also have see another thing too. I let me see if I could zoom in on this for you. There we also have your sergeant rankings for your commanders. We have your Canadian markings for Korea. Your British markings for World War Two. And then your American stuff for World War II in Korea also. Anyways, so we have our stat card. Everyone loves the stat card. This is another smart thing I love that they do. So as I was saying, it can be used, it's only late war. So uh, if you guys haven't seen that before, this is how the game balances out what you can take in your list besides points. So this is like, say, so you don't have someone who has a Blitzkrieg army, so like a French army or... Um, and like early German like 1939 army won't just get obliterated by somebody who has a late war army because you know technology and stuff and then this little box here it's hard to read but it basically says that you can use it in uh, bolt action Korea and then we have our points it's kind of blurry on the inexperienced one but who cares and my Sherman the writing got messed up on my printing. I think that's just from the uh, background stuff. But anyways, let me get this back into, into a video. Anyways, so for inexperience, it's 188 points. And for veteran, it's 282. Bam. Then on the back, we have the stats. So if there's any special rules or upgrades you can take, it'll be right here with point increases and stuff. So this can take a pintle mounted MMG and of course you can upgrade that to an HMG because Americans. And you can and you can have a hetero cutter on it. But that's only for the 4445 version, which I'm pretty sure that's only what this version is. Again, my, my printing got blurred, so. We have our instruction manual, which I've been loving these two. It just kinda sucks that. You know basically wasting paper in the end for the environment and stuff because it's so big but I keep these because it has history on the front and also when I have bits I can use this sheet right here to kind of look up what bits I had and then, oh okay that's cool look at that they're pulling a Star Wars Legion where there is a freaking poster in the back of your book that is actually pretty sick I might have to scan that then you have your different markings here so you have your this is your your um, fury and then you have your regular for your British and then you have your uh, Korean or Canadian That is cool. That's cool. That's actually really cool, Warlord. Your this kit, I think, so far, is my all favorite one that you've made. So, yeah, let's let's get into the actual plastic. Anyways, the body here is to scale with normal miniatures from the Warlord line. So in theory, I have. <clears throat> the leg still from um, the bagpipe player model from Warlord. 
I could glue this torso onto those legs and get another British uh, paratrooper or or American paratrooper with the weird hop weird hodgepodge of uniform, and I can make an RPG character or something out of it. So, one of these is the Fury body. One of them is not. So we have what looks like start off here is the the sprue specific for the easy eight which has bits on it and I believe this has yeah this has the body to make the um, to make the fury model we'll, we'll get into a deeper look once I actually pull out stuff we have the body with the hull again if you've seen a normal Sherman you've seen this this is like a slightly larger plastic Sherman almost like a jumbo then we have the newish the new sprue for this this is all new warlord plastic like a new plastic sprue from them antennas the the suspension that makes it an easy eight or at least part of that project there's a video. Oh, and there's the logs. Okay, so they did. So this is. It looks like this might actually be. Let me check. Because it has the round edges like a tallery. This might just be. This might just be the. Um, Fury model kit from a tallery. But missing some extra bits that go on the side. Like the helmets and stuff. But. Yeah, this is the Fury. This is the Fury EZ8. So I'm I'm just gonna build it as it. So uh, yeah, let me zoom in here because you guys, like I said, I'd show you guys some stuff. But look at that detail. So we got the the bodies. You'll probably want to see the bodies. The head. Here's the torso that fell out. Hey right, guys, so we are back at the end of this video, uh, taking a look at the um, EZ8 from. The new, new quote unquote, I'm doing air quotes, Plastic Warlord uh, EZ8 single box, because they did release these originally in a three box. Um, this is basically the Italeri kit, the Fury model kit that they do, except for with less parts like wiring and all that. But it does come with the stuff still on the, on the sprues, so we're going to take a look at that. I primed this in the Vallejo khaki color. Cause I'm just going to airbrush over this with the olive drab because I'm out on the primer aerosol version. So it doesn't matter. If not, it's going to be used for both Canadian and English or like Canadian and uh, Americans, but mostly my Americans. So taking a look here, we have, this is the model completely done. Uh, you might be able to see some of the gray through the primer because it's a thin primer. You don't need much, but you can do multiple layers. Vallejo stuff's Again, I've talked about Vallejo before in the past, but it is a, um, you know, advanced paint line. Anyways, so as you can see here, we have the logs, we have some bedrolls, the suspension, the turret here. But we'll get into each part of these and talk about it. So let's take the hull off there, talk about these treads. So looking at these treads here, um, these were double pieces that went together and for the most part pretty easy to put together those uh, four pieces one on the front one on the back then the two tops though they did mess up and on the instruction manual these uh, drive wheels are reversed for their numbers so the one for the left should go on the right and the one on the right goes for the left there is keying in you if you've built any treads before from warlord you'll understand how to read like the flat bits versus the pokey bits so on this end it got covered up a bit but you can kind of see how the if i can focus it you can kind of see how the treads are like off to the right a bit 
it's because of that mess up. So this side kind of messed up. But this side I got it right, so it's fine. And then on the back here, the um, the air duct didn't go on quite well, so I'll get, let you guys kind of see under here how it's supposed to go. If I can get to focus, but yep. Yeah. And of course we have the stowage options and things like that, and some extra bits I threw on. So that's the hull. Besides that, it went together like a normal Sherman. So, so this is the first real time we're getting one of these um, from, again, Warlord kit. Um, one of these M4A1 whatever, the square turrets with the 75 in it. Um, this is the first time we're getting it in plastic. So that's probably maybe a main reason why you want to buy this because I think you can unless you have one of the Shermans with the little peg holes for the Firefly or the, the, the Sherman 5. You can um, put this turret on there with a little fin dangling so that way you can make those up, up um, turreted Shermans. But here we have the model itself. I'm itchy, give me a second. Yeah. The model itself with the tank commander which is based off of uh, there's a helmeted version if you want to make a generic version slash Canadian and then there's this guy with the unhelmeted which is supposed to be the um, Brad Pitt uh, I think his name's Brad Pitt you know the tank commander of fury this is supposed to be his model and then we have more bags and stuff on the side you can have this hatch open this hatch can be open this hatch can be open and the machine gun uh, where these antennas go, you're supposed to drill them out so it pops in, or you can leave them shut. And of course, the inside. So, all in all, uh, a great um, kit. Uh, again, as I was in the beginning of this, where you'll see from the stream, I'm in love with this model kit. This is my favorite one that they've made so far um, of their mainline things. I do like, though, the... The the crom uh, the church the cromwell cromwell's really nice but I do like the Churchill um, that one's kind of fun that's a bit of a challenge and the um, I do like the Opal Blitz truck very much for for the model but for the mainline tanks what you get in this box like the uh, the the poster the instruction manual with all the history about it like quick history if the fact that you get an order dice in it now the card, the uh, markers for damage, the fact that it can make the Fury model, or at least help you make a version of it very much. Again, I like how we're getting more Korean stuff again. This is technically a Korea War model. So I'm very happy and I'm excited to see Warlords start doing more things like this going further. I do have a um, the new half track, the mini half track, the FDK or KFZ 250 the one that can make the anti-air gun, uh, gun version of it that's what I'm going to make uh, I believe it also comes with the Rommel model I can't quite remember but with that guys thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed this quick little video on this and if you just want to see a model you can stop here but now we're going to get into the facts and stats of this model this is what we're going to start doing we're going to when I do these more in-depth reviews slash build videos and streams, we're going to talk about the rules and points and why you'd use it, why you buy it, costs versus whatever. And then we'll save the YouTube shorts for just unboxings. But let's get right into that, um, into that, you know, into the reading of the rules. To the rules! Okay guys, so we're back here. We have the rules up. You should be seeing it on the screen. If not, if it cuts in or out, have art this cool art piece from the instruction manual. Definitely gonna photocopy this and save it as a wallpaper. But anyways, let's get into the rules. Again, I own the I own all the books, so I'm reading it from the book. Uh, if not, I'm you can find it on the officially supported. It's not official non official officially supported web builder called Easy Army. 
It has all the basically all the major like competitive. You can play competitive Warlord games on it. I know Warlord is working on their own app right now, but it's kind of trash. But they're trying, and it they prom it is promising. But anyways, into the rules. So this is from the Armies of the United States um, book. I don't know if there's any updates or FAQs for it, but here we go. So it is a medium tank of course it is a sherman it has starting its cheapest is 188 for inexperience or 292 for a veteran uh, of course if you're playing americans you will excuse me you want to play uh, as a veteran because you get stabilizers so you don't get the penalties for moving and shooting um it has the it's got a heavy anti-tank gun so instead of a medium anti-tank gun you get a heavy anti-tank gun so you're paying a little bit more points for that and you've lost the easily catches on fire rule because it is a more mod it's a newer sherman so it's it lost the weak slides so you're paying for that in the cost though not a huge difference compared to a normal sherman i think it's maybe only like 20 it might be i have to relook at it again but I don't think it's a huge thing if anything like max maybe like 70 something points but anyways um you can have of course as your normal with shermans you can have your pintle mount and that can be an hmg uh how it works for those who might be new to it you basically add the points total of the pintle mounted mmg with the hmg so instead of um so it's not just you pay 10 points and you get an hmg you have to buy the mmg first because that's you welding in the basically the mount for the the, the uh, mmg and then you're replacing it from the motor pool with a 50 cal machine gun and that would mean you add the two points together which would mean for 25 points you can get an hmg or for 15 points you can get a mmg and then because it is a late war tank that can be used with the british you can get the uh, Cullen Hedgerow Cutters for 10 points. If you're playing a lot of terrain ma maps, especially those with hedgerows, like, um, uh, you know, D-Day, Normandy stuff, or France, they're worth getting. Uh, the mo- the mo- bleh. Excuse me. The kit did not come with one, though for like 5 bucks USD, you can go onto the Warlord website, or, th you know, 3D print. But go onto the Warlord website and buy a sprue that comes with a bunch of boxes, crates, and, and tarps that has one on there. So, not that bad. It will fit it. You know, do your normal thing with a Sherman when you put a hedgerow on. You don't put the, the hook, tow hooks on. It has flak, of course, MMG, if you have the thing on. Just, just stabilizers. And unlike the normal Shermans that have an upped H HE shot, this only has a 2 inch instead so why would you want to use this well if you're playing late war especially you're going to be fighting a lot of um germans or um you know germans and other russians potentially if you're doing that sort of things um hungarians italians potentially but you're going to be fighting a lot of vehicles that are have a heavier armor than their class and also a range. They're going to be a lot farther out. You're going to be fighting your Panthers. You're going to be fighting t Tigers, um, pa uh, Panzer IVs with the side skirts in, things like that. Even like short, like tank hunter tanks, like Hetzers and things. Or even if you're playing against allies, you're going to be fighting against, you know, your um, your farther ranged vehicles like your your uh, priests and your Churchills things like that your rams so having that heavy anti-tank gun is definitely going to be a boost again removing that um you know side armor already already just into the cost and it looks cool and so yeah really you're paying for that extra that heavy anti-tank gun you um the other reason why you might get this is more for modeling purposes it looks different the suspension is cooler but it's also a m4a1 whatever square turreted in plastic so you can buy this model and put the turret onto a plastic one or if you have a scanner or you know 3d print you know what you can do nowadays with technology you could copy or even do the classic mold make a mold out of it 
you could have multiple turrets. But um, having it for that is great. The heavy anti-tank gun is 72 inches, so, you know, big boom. So yeah, that's really the reason why I get it. If anything, if you can get one of the M4s on um, in your store or something or you don't mind the resin, I'd probably say probably get the M4 or run this as the M4 rules instead. Uh, though the M4, the, the M4 has the benefits of being slightly shorter and, uh, you know, cheaper, but it will still have, you know, the weak sides easily catches on fire and stuff. Whereas the EZ8 has, doesn't have that. If anything, if I would change any rules with this vehicle, I would probably make it so that maybe because of the suspension system, maybe the EZ8 had better turn radius, maybe it can turn more, like maybe one more time in a turn, or it can turn during an advance, maybe have something to do with it because you can give it hedgerow cutters, maybe has some rules about going over rough terrain or places that might crumble under it, it has better chances of survival, something to do with its movement and its stability. Maybe you just have it always has gyro stabilizer on no matter what uh, uh, ranking you have built for it because of the idea behind the suspension was to have a heavier tank and a better suspension for said tank while being easy to replace and it did do that it just it, they don't have that rule in the book that i can see right now so that is something i would change personally and but yeah besides that the only benefit of getting this model compared to an m4 in resin is that it's plastic it was fun to build. You get this awesome art piece, the dice, the card, and you can make fury out of it if you want to, or have a Korean model. So multi-purpose for that. But it's a nice model to have on your have on your team. Uh, do you need it? No. Um, if you have, if you want to do an armored platoon, I'd probably buy one of these and then get two Shermans on the side, and then that have that be your. Um, your, you know, your infantry unit, and then maybe have a Hellcat in there, or a, or a uh, Art, or um, Achilles, or Archer, whatever it's called, the heavier armor version of a uh, Hellcat, and that could be your your platoon of tanks. But with that, I've basically talked much about my rules, how you'd want to use this, what I would change. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this video. I'm gonna go play some VR chat with my friend, and then have this uploaded for what would probably be Friday. So. Hopefully I'm not too quick. If not, maybe tonight I'll get I'll get to editing it tonight, but we'll see. We will see you guys in the next video and on my streams. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Have a good day. Click the video. Click it. Click the video. You know you want to. Click it.